Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to what I think is my first ever proper EMU review. So today's engine slash train pack slash EMU is one that quite a few people have asked me to do since I revealed I had it. And so it is this, the beautiful Hornby Southern Railway 2 HAL EMU. And as you can see, the version I've got here is in the Southern Green. And if you didn't know already, I absolutely love the Southern Green. So it had to be this version for me. I actually paid quite a bit extra to get the Southern Green version. I found this at a train fair for, I think, £85 or somewhere around that mark. I thought that was a bargain because I think the RRP is £130. So you can do the maths there quite a big saving on that however it turns out that Hattons are actually selling the blue version of this for much cheaper I think 62 pounds which is astonishingly cheap for what is a really well detailed uh, train pack slash EMU whatever you want to call it uh, so I've included a link in the description for that I don't know how long they're going to have them in stock for at that price because that really really is a massive slash off the RRP uh, so yeah if you're interested in these check that out and maybe pick one up they are lovely things as we're going to find out but today I'm going to be looking at this southern version and if you didn't know already uh, it was part of the southern railway at least that was the first to get electrification so a lot of the really early electric locos and early emus of course uh, tended to be from the southern and this one is no exception so let's take a look and we'll see what it's like shall we so yeah, I mean, regardless really of what the model's actually like, just looking at the outside of the box here, you can see how beautiful that southern livery is. Uh, it almost looks like a coach train pack, doesn't it? Or something like that, a coach pack, you'd say. Uh, but no, it is actually a motorised uh, couple of vehicles in here. So if I just show you the sort of edge of the box here, you can see the product code, which is R3260. It's a Southern Railway 2 HAL, and that's the running number there, which is 2653 train pack. SR2 HAL driving motor brake EMU, and that's the running number for that, 107. And then the bottom part there is SR2 HAL Composite EMU 12807, and I suppose that part will be just the dummy, or the non-driven coach. And this version is supposed to represent the original uh, 2 HAL from 1938, I believe. Anyway, if I turn this over and show you the back of the box, you can see just how beautifully presented this is. You've got this lovely photo of the thing at the bottom, and then quite a comprehensive history here of the 2 HAL, so if you want to pause it and read that, you feel free to, uh, but I will give you my own sort of abridged history of them later on but for now I think that's all I've got to say on the outside of the box I'm dying to get into this and see what it's like and I'm sure you are as well so uh, let's get this open and we'll take a look so I'm gonna open it at this end I don't suppose there's a right or wrong end to do it and uh, let's see what we get inside the box shall we all right anything else no I think everything's come out uh, there should be some instructions somewhere I don't know where they've got to hang on they must still be in the box yes they are <laughs> Right, let's take a look at the instructions first then. So very simply, this says 2 HAL, Electric Multiple Unit, Operating and Maintenance Instructions. Let's take a look inside then, and yeah, it's relatively simple, isn't it? A little bit about lubrication, which is of course important. Body removal, also important if you wanted to DCC fit this thing. And yes, sure enough, there's a little bit about DCC fitting, and then also a little bit about coupling the two units together, which is obviously rather important. So yeah, that's handy to hold on to for sure. But for now, let's take this uh, front piece of card off and see See what we get inside. Okay, so quite interestingly, the thing is in polystyrene, which given how fragile the models are, is a little bit surprising, isn't it? It's a shame they haven't done a backman and put everything in the block of ice, but never mind. Uh, we do have a little bit of a detail pack, and by detail pack, I just mean some head code stickers, I believe they are, uh, which is quite nice for Hornby to include. It means they haven't just picked a number and smacked it on the front. It means that you can really just uh, customise it to your heart's content, which is great. And uh, there we are, there we have the two units, which do look very, very beautiful, but as you can tell, the colour is nothing like on the front of the box. Look at this. Can you see the difference there? This is a much, much lighter green and this is much darker. Uh, yeah, unbelievably different, really, to the photo, uh, which is a little bit strange. I suppose I would have preferred them to be uh, a more light shade of green, I guess. However, I'm not an expert on the prototype, so you guys will have to let me know. In fact, I'll put up a poll if you do know. Is the model more realistic or is the photo more realistic? What sort of shade of green should it be? Anyway, that's not really that important for right now, so let's try and get this out. Uh, I'm gonna, I think I'll grab the tissue, see if I can pull them out that way. Yes, I can. 
Okay, so I've gone for the bottom one first, and this one is the heaviest one, so this must have the motor on board. And yes, I reckon that must be the driven bogey there. Uh, it's only got the one driven bogey, this one appears to be freewheeling, yes it is. Uh, and as a result, this is quite a heavy car, I think if I remember correctly, it's heavier than the other one. Uh, it's also very, very fragile, you just get the, immediately, you get the impression of how fragile it is. Uh, the shoes for picking up power here flex quite a little bit, and a lot of the underframe detail flexes quite a lot as well. And uh, that's sort of where your hands naturally gravitate towards when you're lifting this thing up uh, so you have to be very careful of that and also on the top there's quite a lot of separately fitted uh, wiring which is also quite quite fragile especially when you're lifting the thing up so yeah there's something about it that just feels quite fragile I think fragile is the best word you really have to be careful with these things but apart from that it really is beautiful looking isn't it look at that so I'm going to show you this up close in just a second anyway but uh, yeah there's a quick look let's get out the other car then which must be the dummy without the motor and yes already I can tell how much lighter this is Ooh, and careful once again I went to hold it by the underframe and look how thin they are they really do move look if I if I put my fingers on them so you've got to be careful so it's very much the same this is the composite one so it isn't the brake I suppose it made sense not to have the motor in this one so that you can see all the way through inside no pickups on this noticeably which means there can't be any lighting on board which is a little bit strange given the RRP you would have thought it would be cheaper if there was no lighting and then on top you've got more of that separately fitted uh, wiring which is very nice to see uh, it's a bit wobbly looking though would they be that wobbly in real life I'm not absolutely sure but nonetheless yeah very very beautiful and then you've got the uh, sort of coupling bar it's a NEM coupling bar fitted to the end of this and so I should be able to clip these two together or I think for now I'm just going to hold them together so that you can see them so there we go that's what it looks like more or less when it's put together yeah, so quite a nice looking thing. Not what I was expecting, of course, because the shade of green is so different from the photo. I assume that was just the photo, but you never know, do you? Anyway, here's a little bit of a history then on the two howls, and after that I'll take one of these up. I'll probably do the... well, it doesn't matter really, does it? I'll put one of them up anyway and do a spotlight on it for you so I can show you the detail. Okay, let's get to it. So the two HAL EMU was introduced to the Southern Railway in 1938, and a hundred of them were built in total, I believe. The name came from the fact that only one car per set had an onboard toilet, and therefore the full name was being uh, two car, half lavatory stock. So you've got the HA coming from the word half, and the L from lavatory. Bit of a strange way to name a locomotive, don't you think, based on the bog? Never mind, not to worry. Uh, these were a development of the earlier two bill units, which also, I think, have been produced by Hornby, I'm pretty sure anyway. And these units ran on the standard 750 volt third rail as newly fitted to parts of the Southern Railway at the time. The two HALs remained in service until they were eventually replaced following the end of their lifespan, uh, and I can't find exactly when withdrawal occurred, but it presumably happened sometime during the 1970s at a guess. Okay, so there she is then up against the white background. I've gone for the sort of non-powered composite coach part of the train pack just because I think this has got more components on it. Uh, but yeah, ultimately it is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Really, really, really nice looking. However, though, you just can't get away from the fact that the box opening experience, which is a thing, I think, you know, first impressions and all, uh, is slightly ruined just by how fragile this thing is, uh, which is, of course, a concern that I've already voiced. I think ultimately the problem is they've gone with high detail with this thing. A lot of the details, specifically the finer details, have been separately fitted rather than just put onto the moulding, which is great in terms of detail, but as I say, it does make the models fragile, and I suppose that must be quite frustrating from a manufacturing point of view. You know, do they go for the detail, or do they add moulded details, which is less realistic of course, but of course more durable. Well, I think in this case they've definitely gone for detail, rather than making sure the model is robust. And I would say probably the best models that I've reviewed have been where the manufacturers have found a way to get that great level of detail, but still make the model really, really solid, which just doesn't really seem to have happened with this. Having said that, none of it is broken off, none of the details broken off, not yet at least, and I have been handling this thing quite a bit, so that's a point in its favour. And as I've already said, in terms of detail, it does make the model really, really impressive. So let's take a look at some of those details now. We'll take a look at the paintwork first of all. Again, I'm no real expert on this, so I don't really know how accurate the livery is, uh, but there is, as I say, a little bit of a mismatch between the box and the actual loco inside. But as you can see, you've got the, uh, the lovely third class numbers there underneath all of the doors. You've got the southern logo applied into the centre, of the coach here and of course the running number. I'll tell you what, all of the application has been done really, really nicely and as you can see we've even got the, uh, I think that's first class on the windows there which have all been lined as well with that sort of orangish stripe. Very, very nicely applied and it's also worth mentioning that all of the windows are flush 
to the outside of the coach, which is always something that I know people like to look for. And also the sort of texture uh, finish, if you like, of the windows is very realistic. It doesn't look like plastic. It does look like glass. I don't know. I mean, it's quite a subtle thing, isn't it? You wouldn't think there'd be much difference between clear plastic and glass. But uh, yeah, this really does look like glass, which is very, very impressive. The under frames are quite impressive as well. I think actually the motorised car is more impressive than this one, but this one's not bad nonetheless. We'll take a look at the pickup bogey here, and I say pickup in terms of real life. This particular coach doesn't have any pickups on it, but you can see the shoe there that picks up power from the third line is a separately fitted piece and separately painted as well. Again, when you're putting this thing onto the track, the temptation is, especially with the heavier motor car, to sort of hold it with that shoe, uh, which flexes when you do so, and it doesn't feel very nice. So you've got to be very careful with that thing uh, but touchwood it is still fitted and as you can tell the actual molded detail on the bogies here is really really impressive in fact if i show you the other bogey you can get a better sense of that really is quite finely detailed that isn't it and of course on the underframe you've got an awful lot of detail underneath there you can see what i think is a generator for the onboard lights and things which is a little bit of a joke because i can't find any lights on these models at all and then as you can see you've got these supports here which again <laughs> are very very flexible you have to be careful not to bend those or really lift the model with those but no looking underneath the model from this angle is really quite an impressive thing isn't it there's so much going on back there now on the inside there's quite a bit of detail this particular car does have the corridor I don't believe the other one does which is quite interesting but you can clearly see all the seats have been put inside there with that little insert uh, which is quite good to see not an astonishing amount of interior detail but I think enough to give it that realistic edge now on the top as I've already said there's an awful lot of separately fitted work something that I don't see very often with my cheap rolling stock and things but yeah this electric wire going along the top looks very very wobbly and if I just press it you can see it does flex there which again just feels a bit cheap and nasty I don't think it's in any danger of coming off unless you're very rough with it but again just touching things and having them flex like that doesn't feel great does it um, so yeah I don't know it just mentally it spoils it very slightly doesn't it when you, you realize how careful you've got to be and if you just grab it in the wrong place just for a second it could very easily damage something uh, but you know most people are careful, I understand that, but uh, I'm just saying that there are a lot of models I have that I can handle quite comfortably without any risk of doing damage, more or less. So looking at the end, you can see we've got quite a lot more detail here. Again, I believe most of this is separately fitted, a lot of wiring and some pipe work going on. Quite interestingly, where the join is between the two units, you've got this sprung buffer, <laughs> which is a single sprung buffer there. Very interesting, that. Uh, yeah, I quite like that. It's quite a small detail that you don't often see, do you? Uh, so I quite like that. There are sprung buffers on the front, but they are not really sprung in the true sense of the word. Uh, what basically, if I turn this upside down, you can see there's just a piece of plastic on the underside which pushes against them, and that plastic just sort of springs back and forth, uh, which isn't very good. When you spring the buffers, they don't come back out all of the way, and I can imagine that getting worse over time. So yeah, again, that's a little bit of a cheap, nasty feature going on there. In terms of the cab, you can look inside, but there's not very much to see in there. It is all quite dark in there, and once again, there are no lights on this model as far as I can tell so the cab remains dark even when running I think that might have been the case in real life though so that's okay uh, but yeah it looks as though there is a small amount of cab detail inside there perhaps but it's very difficult to get a look the head code box also is just a sort of blank piece and I say blank because again I'm pretty sure in real life they would be backlit wouldn't they uh, but once again sadly no lighting at all and also no interior lighting in any way uh, again I'm pretty sure there would have been some sort of lighting on board this thing uh, but in terms of the model not of that has been represented however on the end here there is an awful lot of separately fitted detail here as you can see all sorts of connectors and different wires and things which again all does appear to be separately fitted uh, so yeah as you can probably tell this model is covered with separately fitted work i mean i suppose in terms of cost you can see why it's quite an expensive model um, because there is so much separately fitted onto it but equally you know the fact that it doesn't have any lights the fact that it is so fragile all that and more really probably explains why Hattons are having to sell these for £62 rather than £130 as Hornby had got them priced uh, because I think the overall effect is a little bit diminished by the quality of the thing and it's a shame because actually I think it's been fairly well built I mean there's nothing really bent or anything is there I mean it's all presented reasonably nicely it's just it doesn't feel great in the hand uh, and finally there's quite an impressive little detail here that I think I'd pick out it's quite minor but as you can see there's just a little foothold uh, for people climbing onto the unit uh, it's a very very tiny piece that but it actually unlike the rest of it feels pretty robust 
So there we go, the other unit is very much similar, so I'm not going to bring that up onto the white background. Of course it isn't exactly the same, but uh, in the interest of time I'm going to get this down onto the track and we'll do a bit of performance with it. Okay, so there she is down onto the track, and yes, it does look beautiful coupled together. It's quite nice actually that the two units are quite closely coupled, and I suppose it's that NEM coupling bar that uh, allows that to be done. Uh, anyway, let's give this a little bit of a test then. I'm going to just ease this up on my DC controller, and we will see what happens. So here goes now. No lights to see, unfortunately. I'm going to show some about that though, because I keep bringing that up, don't I? Right, I'm turning it up. And as you can see, it's ooh, just starting to jump. There we go. Take my hand off the controller. Uh, and that is basically the slow speed. Uh, hopefully, yeah, you can just tell, can't you, that she's moving there. It's a little bit jumpy. It's only once you get to sort of that speed that it gets smoother. Let's see if it's any better forwards. Yeah, no, not really. I'd say it's about the same forwards, perhaps very marginally better, but it just tends to edge forwards. I don't know really whether this is a five pole or a three pole, because normally Hornby do put five poles into the into their models, especially the top of the range ones, except the way this one is jumping forwards suggests that it might just be a three poler. Either that or it's just the gearing. It could be. It does seem to come on at quite a low speed, which could it could sort of explain that. Anyway, over the express point she goes. This is the motor car, by the way, this one at the front. Not this one, there you go. And it does go over the express points just fine. It does have full pickups on uh, on this unit at least. Uh, so yeah, there shouldn't be any problem there. Okay, so let's get her going then. Let's see what she looks like going around the layout and I'll show you what else is going to be running. And so on the inside line then I've got yet another classic early Southern electric, although technically I think this is an electro diesel, isn't it? Uh, this is the Class 73, uh, still in its Southern colours, although it is technically speaking a BR livery. And uh, she's got some Southern coaches pulling and I thought this was more the colour that the EMU would be, but uh, sadly not. And then on the inside line I've got a much more modern design, this is the 225 in that beautiful intercity swallow livery. I just thought I'd run this one because I haven't in a long while. Anyway, let's go and have a look at how the 2 hour runs, shall we? So overall I'd say it's a reasonably smooth and quiet runner. I think I have seen smoother and I've definitely heard quieter. But I think overall it's definitely a reasonable performer, definitely not too bad. I suppose with the racket of all the other engines, you can't really hear any sound from it at all. But uh, yeah, certainly the sound isn't an issue. And it really does look the part, doesn't it? Thanks to all that beautiful detail. So, it's a really interesting model, isn't it? Absolutely excellent in terms of detail. One of the best I've ever seen in terms of detail. But, of course, it does have its issues. So, uh, let me know. I'll put up a poll. Is this something you'd buy? Or are you more sort of put off by the small issues? I'll be quite interested to find out what people think about that. So here are some of my ratings then for the beautiful Hornby 2 Hal. The detail was absolutely astonishing to be honest with you. The only reason it's not got a 5 out of 5 is because there weren't any lights on it. Now something inside me wants to believe that it's prototypical that this thing didn't have any lights on it and that's why the model doesn't either. But I just can't bring myself to believe that there wasn't a single light bulb on board these in real life. So yeah, I don't know, just you guys let me know if you know. I did look online myself but I couldn't find anything concrete but surely the uh, head code boxes would have had lights in them. Never mind, anyway, power 4 out of 5, clearly power isn't a massive concern with this, unless of course you wanted to connect another unit to it perhaps, and uh, have more than just two cars. Uh, in that case I think you'd be okay, it is a relatively heavy power car, although of course there only are two driven axles, uh, so you might struggle if you're adding loads and loads of extra coaches, but I think it's got a reasonable amount of power for what it is. The slow speed also, I think I'm being quite generous here with 4 out of 5, because it was a little bit juddery, but it certainly does seem to get better as it goes on. So I've given it a 4 out of 5 there, benefit of the doubt I'd say. Quality then, 3 out of 5, it's true that most of it is held together very very nicely, but again lack of proper light, uh, only two driven axles, all that flexible detail, and also the slightly dodgy packaging. I would have much preferred the blister pack given how fragile they are. So the quality I've just given it a 3 out of 5, not good, not bad, just in the middle of the road there. And similarly value for £130, I've given it 3 out of 5, once again just middle of the road, not good, not bad. I can kind of see where they were coming from with that price because there is so much separately fitted detail on this model. But equally when you've got it in your hands it just feels like too much money for what it is. However the Hatton's price of £62 is extremely good for this and even I think what I paid, about £85 for the Southern 
version is a lot more like it. Overall then, that is 7.14 out of 10. Not a terrible score. Into the ranking she goes for this year then at 38th, just above the Bachman Gordon and below the V3. Yep, reasonably pleased with this one. Got lots of other electrics on the line today, by the way, so if you want to spot them all and let me know which ones you've seen in the comments, please do. As always, there is an odd one out, so uh, 10 points to anyone who spots it. Yeah, I think it's quite nice to see some of the intercity stuff running again, isn't it? Just for a change, of course. Ooh, once again, I do love the livery on that Class 73. If you haven't seen that review already, by the way, I'll put up a little link in the top corner right now just so that you can check it out if you want to. Yeah, lovely thing, isn't it? OK, well that's going to about do it for today. Thank you very much for your company, and I hope you enjoyed this for a change. I don't think I've ever done a modern EMU before, so it's been really, really enjoyable to do that. So I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please feel free to leave the video a like or even a comment, because I always love the feedback, and of course it's always lovely to hear from you. But for now, folks, thanks for your company once again, and I will see you all very, very soon. Cheers, everybody.